right, here we are. Last and final, at least oh, for man. me. You guys continue on. But uh, digging deeper. The, uh, I don't know what episode this is. Oh, He's thinking Sarah McLaughlin right now. Sarah McLaughlin? I was more thinking about Hit the Road, Jack. Oh, no, no. I'm not even, I don't even know. Okay, I'm not going to contribute well, to this. You just go it's ahead. It's the uh, Rise City navigation team. We call them the nav team. Yeah. Robert, Pete, Mariah, and this is Brandon. And yeah, I... Other than introducing this episode, there's a lot of memorabilia sitting on the table, and I'll, I don't know what else is happening, but uh, I'll let yeah. someone else take it from here. History well, and items. <laughs> for the people that are just listening, because some listen, some watch, the people watching on YouTube can see this up on the table, but uh, Mariah, tell us what, what it, what's on the table right now for the audio listeners, just oh, a rough yeah. idea. What they're... Okay, so what's on the table is the contents of a shelf that sits in the office that randomly has been accumulating items since the church started mm -hmm. and we thought it'd be fun to splay them out and have our historian tell yeah. us about their significance each one's on that shelf because it has a story or some significance yes. to our past so, so we've got a picture frame with the map of bolivia bolivia, bolivia. Yeah. Yes. we've got a chattering teeth thing that you like wind up there it is just like that. we have a <laughs> tiny ice cream truck yeah a baton you would use in a relay race. Okay. A picture of some really young looking people from Buco de Beppos. Oh, very nice. Ooh, very young looking. Um, we have Just like a that video yesterday. pig <laughs> yeah. with wings that you can like crank and the wings fly. Yeah. We have a, what, what would we call this? School a district. Plaque. A placard. A placard. Yeah. We have a jar, a very dusty jar yes. full of poker chips. And on the front it says, souls all in. So I'd love to know our tie with gambling. And then okay. <laughs> we have a giant trophy. It's giant a big, trophy. It's a large one. All, yes. all church softball league. Yeah. Yes. And I'm excited about this one because a lot of these things, I actually don't know what they are. So Robert, so, why don't you kick us off? Why don't you just pick, pick one? Pick the weirdest one. The pick weirdest one is want, definitely going to be and just say Brandon, the flying pig. Just, just flying say, Brandon, pig. explain this and okay. what is the relevance of Explain though? this flying pig that looks like it's made out of coffee filters. Explain that to me. <laughs> I mean, it pretty much is made well, out of coffee pig filters. Is so coffee. that was this our... I don't know. It, I can't imagine. Third? It does! Oh, oh, barely. It works. Oh, if you are listening, it is this. literally flapping its wings. You, you it's a miracle. It. it is kind of a miracle. It's a miracle. I <laughs> never saw that The happening. whole <laughs> point of it was the miracle of when pigs fly. Of like, okay. And, I don't remember that one in the Bible. And then here's um, a miracle as well. Was that the Legion no. one? Or? It was, yeah. it was yeah. Easter, right? It was Easter. It was yeah. Easter talking about when Jesus cast the demons out, the pigs went over the cliff. Oh, it really was. Oh, and really was. yeah, talking about when pigs fly. And more looking at the deliverance of the man and the pigs going over the embankment. But but the focus was, what are the things um, really that you think when pigs fly? Like, that can't happen. God, God, couldn't, God couldn't do that, wouldn't do that, shouldn't do that. And that was the emphasis. I think it was our third Easter. And that was our last Easter at Hill Creek School before we moved into our current facility. And how did you use this thing in the middle of the message? I actually had like a little string that tied it to the... Um, to the, to the ceiling tile and look and it's like a fishing wire and mm -hmm. at some point i wound it up and i just said look and these things can happen and the pig kind of started to, to fly it actually in a starts circle. to fly in oh, a yeah. circle fly in a circle wow yeah that's pretty Since awesome then. another gift of amazon <laughs> <laughs> we got this one <laughs> rising church it. is sponsored by amazon an entire <laughs> generation <laughs> of <laughs> didn't return this one though no nope. yeah. so we kept it that one kept it lasted yeah. the kids played with it a ton and yeah. that's why okay. it looks like that yeah well, right, right, right. Made pick one. Let's keep going. <laughs> this is... oh, what are you going to do? Um, I want the do? picture of everybody from where I have no idea. Julie's got really cool highlights in her hair. Brandon's got a beard <laughs> and looks a little like a lion. Like a lion? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> Why don't you let there's Pete. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, one of our first christmas dinners uh oh. of our early staff so tiffany's in there chad's in there who's tiffany for our tiffany most... is our first uh she's mariah before mariah our first children's director okay all right and uh is, who's in the far back is that Lori? that's who's who's that that's Lori. yeah and Lori suchi who was our first kind of uh executive admin so this was probably maybe our second christmas and we wow. did like, a christmas dinner at buca de beppo and wow. yeah, I had a beard. I forgot about that. So <laughs> and when we do the staff Christmas party now, uh, it cannot fit in Buca de Beppo. No, it um, and there's a lot more uh, time that's needed to dedicate to like 
<laughs> singing praises of everybody in the church and staff and elders. So, so yeah, that was. Yeah. I mean, that was a fun, a lot of fun gross. dinner. But that was. This is kind of one of the original ones. So wow. it's a very cool picture. I love that on the back. It says "I Heart SD." I Heart SD. Yeah, yeah. I got the gas lamp, the harbor. Only one oh, of the, the couples zoo. there is from San Diego. Yeah, there's only w- one couple <laughs> in this picture will be left here in San Diego, and that would be Mr. Pete the and Goodman's Julie. Here. Yeah. After we move, so pretty crazy to get a little sentimental. A little I love that it says "I Heart SD" because your heart will always have. A piece left here in SD, I think. So absolutely, yeah, not a question. With a carne asada burritos. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to get those. Hold someone to bring those to me. You're gonna get your ground Someone's beef gonna... burrito. Shut up. Oh, you're going. <laughs> Pete, pick one. Yeah. So I know most of these. Yeah. But I don't remember the baton. So Ooh. Ooh. jog my so, memory. What was the baton? I'll from? pass the baton. So the baton was actually we were doing um, a series called the Great Investment looking at investing in the next generation. This was right before we merged in uh, with Harvest. It was one of the final series at Hill Creek School. Mm-hmm. And just talking about both in terms of the next generation, in terms of reaching people here in this community, mm-hmm. the, the merger, all that kind of stuff. Um, we talked about the necessity of having to, from one generation to the next, pass the baton. And kind of the part of the, the message that I think the reason this became something that kind of a staple is because I brought someone up on stage I intentionally fumbled the handoff and let it hit the ground and then talking about like, this is our role. And then, wow. and what we do not want to do is fumble the handoff. And I remember showing, there's a video from the Olympics some years ago yeah. where uh, a, a gold one. medal was lost because of a fumbled handoff. And so we kept this baton to remind ourselves we always need to be looking at the next generation and passing it on. It's called the great investment. That was the name of the series. I love that. And then harvest. Yeah. So there's it. like, love that. It's always <laughs> difficult amazing. sometimes to remember you and I and all of us sort of like this is our every day and we've been on this journey. There, I had someone come up to me at church yesterday and literally was like, "So I hear you're the you're, you're stepping in temporarily." I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Well, that should be okay. You you've preached before, haven't you?" Oh. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." I, I've, I've, and, but it's like just remembering that people yeah. are always joining the journey at different points. Like, I and I don't. Some people might, we know we know, but like Brandon, just like talk to us about. The, you just said before the merger, like yeah. maybe there's people listening or watching that don't even know what you're talking that's a about. Great point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we that's probably, I would say, probably one of the most, if not the most, catalytic things for Rice City's yeah. you know, young life was in 2016. Mike and Colleen Crandall, as well as the, the elders of Harvest uh, Christian Fellowship, which was here at this location, felt like God told them that they needed to pass on the facility and merge with somebody, and they had. had the facility was completely paid off. Yeah. They had about probably 150 people still attending. So it was, it was still a, a, you know, a church that was functioning and doing well, but they just felt like that they had this space that wasn't being maximized to kingdom potential. And so somehow we won the kingdom lottery, and they found us and said, hey, what would you think about this? And Mike and I hit it off at the very beginning and just, you know, just can't believe. You know, even it's so different now having a yesterday for me of like essentially stepping away from leading um, and not having to, like I could continue to lead here for a long time. I mean, I feel like God told me to, but I was like, it's just weird when you, you said, no, I feel like this is what God's told us to do. And, and same thing with Mike. Mike was a pastor here at Harvest for 25 years. And he felt like God said, no, it's time to, to pass the baton, like to, yeah. to the next generation. And so we merged together. Harvest became Rise City and the two church families became one family. And it allowed us to get in this facility. We renovated it and made it what it is today. Um, but it was just weird yesterday having those moments of like, oh my gosh, like I'm not ready for this. I I, don't, I can't do this. Like I don't want to do this. What is happening here? And and I just I had a deeper level of gratitude, sympathy, and empathy for Mike and Colleen yesterday, just being on the side of us that they were. Like I felt very different in 2016 when I was like. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And now you're the one like, man, okay, <laughs> Lord, I trust you in this. And so, good. so yeah. And by that point, this picture had grown. Yeah. Uh, the year before that, <laughs> uh, we hired Matt Heinrichy. Yep. Who was on the video yesterday. Yeah. And uh, 
Robert had some comments about uh, Matt oh, no. in the video. I did not say anything <laughs> no. about Matt. <laughs> Matt filmed the camera in this way. I was like, I was like, he's, Matt he's, been, uh, he's looking in the sun, so his eyes were very like glazed. Squinted. He looked like maybe uh, there was some non-illegal <laughs> smoking or something going on in his face. No, we love Matt. Uh, and then, <laughs> Why would you? It was, uh, <laughs> he looked high. I don't know what I'm going to say. He wasn't. I don't understand. But we love Matt. And then uh, right about this up. time, the same time, 26 years ago. These are the things I'm worried about. <laughs> okay, yeah. I just, I'm just like, you just called our former co-pastor a stoner. <laughs> <laughs> just like, and he's not. And he's, he's fully not. not. He was looking in the sun when he was doing the video. Most of the people, I would assume if you're watching this, you either <laughs> We're at church, or you watch church. You know what I'm talking. About. I'm not. I mean, and then this same year we also hired Kyle uh, yeah. to be our worship yeah. leader. Also in the video. Who's on the video? Yeah. Um, very cool. So man, it just the team kept growing, and then you I came see. in 20. I beat them all. She you came here before. before. She oh, was man. here right for the merge. Yeah, Matt and I got um, yeah. hired up at the same time, but Matt took longer to get here. Okay. And so I, my first day was April 3rd, and we merged on June 16th. Yeah. So she was at the school for just. Less than two months before we, okay. yeah, and I was hired in January, yeah. So, which is awesome. It was one of my first things I did was I called Mike to introduce myself, yeah. And I because was, when we hired Matt, they had Harvest had David Daly, who was, right. who was their executive pastor, and there was this question of like which one stays, which one goes, mm. and um, wow. you know, we'd already hired Matt and you know, to speak to, to David's, you know, just his position and credibility. He just he said, I, I, I feel like that my role is to kind of more or less broker this deal and to step aside and he had planted a church and then now he's doing real estate stuff so mm -hmm. it's just wild how all those pieces fell together it is yeah it was a cool time to come on staff because i didn't really know the rice family i didn't really know the harvest family and i kind of got to come in as a neutral yeah then i got to know both families simultaneously and got to be part of that hmm. and god so. really used you to help like, kind of be a bridge in a lot of moments I, I really felt that way and it was such an honor it was just i've a heard that great a lot way to start that testimony follows so. Yeah, I don't. I mean, because in between Tiffany, who was the first, we had Jen McKenna, who mm -hmm. was the second mm -hmm. children's director, and she was really only there for maybe I eight say, I've months. Never heard eight, that name. Well, she's yeah. only there for like eight okay. to twelve months at most. Her husband then got um, a new assignment, I think, in Hawaii. He was in the military. Okay. And and from a Mariah to come in, I mean, one, what's even transpired, I, I would believe you'd say, with the relationship that you have with Mike and Colleen, mm -hmm. um, is incredible. But also Mariah could have operated in a church plant situation, set up teardown, but she's really wired. Like you had experience and even just the way that your mind works to step into a facility, to think about the programmatic aspects and kids ministry yeah. in a, you know, space we could do this 24 seven. Like Mariah was the perfect fit and God brought her. So I was so excited. Yeah. And, and we're very grateful for you. So, <laughs> so you should pick something else. What, what, what else on, on this table would you like Brandon to give us all the answers to? Um, <laughs> All the answers. I would like to hear a little story. bit about this trophy. Oh, the man. infamous or famous. That's one of many, actually. Can I just let me just say that? So one of many. Okay. Champions. Uh, that trophy softball. actually we, represents okay, the move. shutdown of the church wide softball league here in East County. Oh, <laughs> explain was, that. Okay. Now this sounds a little bit arrogant, but it's there's a there's a fine line between arrogance and just truth and confidence. <laughs> so. Is it fine? No. Well, we said right before <laughs> this is actually statement. this this section of the podcast is dedicated to uh, Jim Nichols and Kyle Steck and oh, Michael Lee Wright. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. So we Michael Lee Wright actually started just kind of getting guys together to play softball after Sunday morning uh, services when we first started, and it gained traction. And eventually, we're like, uh, we would love to form a team. And so there was actually a church league here in East County. We jo joined that league and we won it the first year. And then we won it the next year. And then we had many people that wanted to like join it. And so we actually ended up having two rise teams in that same league. So there was two rise teams and there was a team from this church and that church and that church. And then the second rise team, which was by Jim Nichols, uh -huh. uh, coached by Jim Nichols, ended up beating the first rise team, which was like Michael Lee Wright, myself and a bunch of others. And then in that championship game that was between our two rise teams. Oh, so eventually they got this trophy and Jim, I think, wanted to make sure this trophy was in the office to remind me that we <laughs> lost to him. Yeah. But actually, they ended up not having the league anymore because Rice kept winning. <laughs> so how many? I, I want to know how many churches. Wow, they just said we're done. But how many teams were actually in this league? 
I mean, there's probably six there to like eight. Foothills, yeah, six to eight. yeah, six to eight. And oh, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure I mean, I'm sure it wasn't because Rise won that they shut it down. There's, there's a lot of extra efforts of volunteering and setting up different things. Sure. Um, but eventually, those two Rise teams merged players, and we started and did uh, a team at the Santee Sportsplex. I've heard it called oh, yeah. a super team before. A super team, and we were sponsored by Chick Fil A because Kyle Steck was our uh, was on the team, and he was the co- the operator at the time. Chick Fil A here, yeah. and we ended up winning a couple of years there as well in the uh, Sportsplex oh, leagues. Okay, so. All right. Rise has a rich history in softball championships, but we have not had a softball team since COVID. So maybe that's something to come as far as future dreams. I have a who uh, knows. I have a story about this. So okay. my <laughs> my first week in the office, I don't know if you remember this. Um, you guys needed a player, a female player. Do you remember this? Yes. On the like last minute, and they didn't know me very well. Then they didn't know I spent pretty much my entire childhood training and playing competitive yeah, softball. Yeah, you're collegiate. Um, and so. I they were talking about I was like oh do you guys do you guys need an extra player and they're like oh yeah w- would you play and I was like yeah yeah I'll, I'll come do I need to bring anything and they're like just like a glove or whatever and I'm like okay got it got it I have a glove at home um does the glove go on the, I'm right handed it goes on the right hand oh, right you're just playing and then with them. Chad and you're playing were like, with them oh my gosh and I'm like I'll come though I'll come I'm, I'm and they were like oh <laughs> and so it was just so much fun to show up and they're like you, you know how a white th- man can't jump on him yeah. yes. they're like you know how yes. to throw a ball and i'm like yeah you're just i do <laughs> and then she was really if y'all good. don't know the first week and mariah literally with yes, us as well Cece, danielle you, perkins yeah, perkins oh yeah. okay yeah there's a lot of you got a scholarship there. to college for softball didn't you? i actually ended up not playing softball in college. It's a long story, but yes. Oh, well, it's another podcast. Guessing. That's another <laughs> podcast. It's a future podcast. <laughs> but she's extremely athletic in a lot of ways. So also get a pickleball. We can all thank my dad. Thanks, dad. I know he's so. watching. <laughs> all right. You know he's Go watching. Ahead, oh, yeah. I, okay, cool. I have one that I really want to pick. Okay. Because I've heard the title of this series, and I know what it's about um, to some extent, but I don't know anything else past that. Tell me about Chatterbox. That was the name of the series. Yes. It was I think it was called Chatterbox. Uh-huh. And it was just talking about the voice of the enemy that constantly is kind of chattering in your oh, okay. In, your, in between your ears and just the lies of the enemy. And we in the promo video or the sermon bumper video, the actual part was having a, a hammer that smashed the chatterboxes. It was kind of hopping around. Is that why it doesn't work anymore? Um no, that was that one got like obliterated. No, I okay. was the yeah. hammer. Was, yeah. And it took a long time to get the shot because it had to like chatter for like 10 seconds and then bam out of nowhere and we probably went through 10 yeah okay. and it was one of those series i i had done a series called subtle the second series i ever did at rise city was called subtle looking at the temptations that jesus went through but i really hadn't talked at all probably for a few years in regards to just satan yeah all that kind of stuff and this this series uh makes me think of liz amaral um, because mm-hmm. Liz, like this is when she came and wow. talks about this being a really uh, significant series that, yeah, she started to defeat the lies of the enemy, the power awesome. of Christ. And so, um, so yeah, there, I, I feel like this was one of those series as we tried to expose just what was in the unseen realm. It had a lot of breakthrough. Um, but there was also, anytime you talk about that kind of stuff. I remember that. Like, Spiritual all warfare. hell breaks loose. <laughs> Tell me a little bit Literally. about that. There, I don't remember the details, but it was like one staff person after another had... Just really hard things happening relationally yeah. and physically yeah. and really. Yeah. It was it was a rough season. Like just some things you just you felt like that there was there was spiritual attacks that came out. And wow. it just reminded me and then taught me all over again. Like when we have these conversations or really try to expose these types of things to ask for prayer in advance and just really give heads up to people. Like it's when you kind of start stirring in that yeah. pot, like there could be some stuff that happens. And so but there was a lot of deliverance and breakthrough that happened as well through it. So it's probably 2019, right? Yep. Yeah, it was pre-COVID. That that also that. reminds me of another one of our favorite former staff members. So that series was like a change in John's life because we had brought John on originally as like a part-time worship, worship guy. Yeah. And then we hired Kyle and and John kind of went and started doing some of his own stuff, like video editing stuff like that. So then we brought him back on as like outsourced video editing and then i think when we were ready for that series that's when we kind of shifted why don't you just come back on our staff and he came back on as um sort of like part-time video editing mm-hmm. he taught himself all of that and eventually that became a full-time job again a few years and later production so, and all that stuff too. Yeah, yeah but i remember wow. like one of the first jobs was like let's make a really cool bumper video for yeah. the series and he kind of had the idea and did it all so mm. cool 
stories to all these things. I've yeah. heard a lot of stories about that series. Um, just that it's created a lot of impact, you know? Um, even a teacher who heard it and immediately sort of implementing it with some of the students and things Susie? like that too. Uh-huh. Yeah. So How about on the yeah. Instagram, we just play all of Brandon's greatest hits from the vault and we just like <laughs> a new one every Sunday. I would not recommend <laughs> yeah, it. Was, Brandon would hate Rye that. Rise City became a video venue. I'm what about do you saying, know? I don't weird. have veto power, but I'm vetoing that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. That's what Mr. Rogers did when he retired. He just like put the old videos in. Good for him. So <laughs> I just compared you to Mr. Rogers. That's one of my oh, personal highest be. compliments. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell All me right. about this glass jar? Ooh. Is it glass because, or is it plastic? So when I it's, it's glass, yeah. It's Whoa, glass. It's so glass. When I when I came to Rise, this had already happened. So it was in your first two years. But I became aware of it because after I had been here maybe two years, it came back up again. Yeah. So the this it's, an, it's a standalone message that Pete did because um, Pete would be the one talking about gambling and poker, not me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. he's really he's really good at it. Um, I poker. I don't know about gambling, but poker. Um, but it was about essentially like you know putting all your chips in and being all in. Uh-huh. Um, and then he invited people to come forward and put their chips in and say, "I want to be all in for Jesus." Essentially, and so they handed out chips before the service. I believe They're so, the chair, right? Yeah. I'm the chair, yeah. Okay. Cool. And it was very cool. Like it was a, it was one of those things that you know, majority of the people came forward and put it in, and just it's awesome. Whether well, it's a first time commitment, recommitment, just like remind themselves of the commitment. It was, it was great. And then, yeah, I don't know. It was probably a good year at least it passed. My understanding was that Pete encouraged people. Yeah. If you don't want to put this in. Yeah, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Yeah. And, and then when you're ready, come in or something and put it in. Yeah, or, or I think whatever. That was the insinuation? Okay. Was like, don't make a commitment today just because everyone's coming forward. Yeah. Is that right, Pete? Pete's like, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. And and so the, yeah. the cool part of this story of why, I mean, it was so these these poker chips in here represent the, the people who did put the actual chips in. But it was a year or two later, uh, there was a guy named Andrew, um, who's no longer part of the church because they, they moved. But um, he came up to me and he handed me the poker chip and he said, I'm ready. I'm going to get baptized. That's awesome. Like he'd been holding this poker chip in his wallet. That's awesome. And, Literally and holding, holding it. it. And, and just waiting, thinking about it, praying through it, just wondering. And then he came to a point like, you know, as a preacher, you know, Pete's like, I, I don't remember. Like there's so many things you preach and like, and people come up to you later on and you're like, oh, remember this? And you're like, no, I don't remember <laughs> that. I mean, because I've, I've, I've been prepping for all these other sermons since yeah, then. Sure. But he held this, gave it to me. And then was baptized, and that was that it's was powerful. pretty pretty amazing. And he was at church every week. Oh yeah, he helped. Then. He helped okay. do things in the parking lot, do different. Yeah, his um, family was really involved. His wife. Yes. Yeah. And so he just been coming yep. and just learning and seeing. And was there a specific thing that day that prompted him, or was it just I don't I something don't recall that, was a that. I don't. I I just think it was him really just weighing and counting the cost. And then he said, I'm ready to do this. So and um, he was kind of like, and it's funny because they were friends with the Leerites. Michael Leerite was very much like that. Like They were next yes. door neighbors. Yeah. And so Stephanie, you know, came to Christ way faster than Michael. And Michael just had to like really work through things, think about things, was highly involved. It was a greeter and all those things. But mm-hmm. it was probably a good year into the life of the church that Michael finally said, okay, I want to do this. Wow. And so when he said it, same as Andrew, was like, they had counted it all and said, yes, I'm in. And so it was pretty cool. That's really powerful. It was awesome. That's really powerful. I love I'd, that. I'd never heard that story. Yeah. I'll never look at that thing the same. Yeah, it's not just a dusty jar that says souls all in. It's <laughs> literally some souls that are all in. That's awesome. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Peter? Well, why don't we do the real memory lane one? Uh, so Aww, you, it was a pun uh, on lane. At some point, and I don't remember this either, <laughs> I do remember sitting... I think we were at like a coffee meister or something and Chad was there and you're like, I think we should buy an ice cream truck. I remember being like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? Give me the, give us the the backstory that even led to you thinking of that idea and what came out of it. So I think the ice cream truck was actually purchased for you came or you came right around there. Cause we went, we went, you and I went and yeah, picked it up together, I, right? I to yeah. Cause that was the scariest drive of our life. Yeah. Are we driving? It's kind of scary to drive now, scary. and it's had a lot of work. Oh, we drove from Paul Rancho Cucamonga on the five, and get out of town. <laughs> no hours. power steering. No power. Wait, but there's no seatbelt except for no. one. No, no. I was sitting in like yeah. It was. It, it was it, terrible. It, it runs pretty great now. Thank you to the Dave and Connie yeah, Bennett. Yeah, Bennett. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, but I can't imagine it was doing great then. No. No. So. <laughs> so like I would say that like I I've th- I may have said this before on the podcast, but like I'm I'm somebody that. 
I mean, I, I can generate ideas and I, and I like being creative, but sometimes what I feel like I'm better at is hearing other people's ideas and then picking the one that yep. like, I think yep. that one works. No. Yeah. That one's it. It's good. And so like the ice cream truck actually came about because, uh, Chris Hornbrook, who was um, the pastor at Momentum Christian Church in Chula Vista that I, that helped get us started. And I was there for six months just helping out before yeah. we started Rise, um, he was just talking uh, one day about a church planter that he was friends with in Atlanta, Georgia, named Bart Stone. He said, yeah, the guy bought an ice cream truck, and and he just used the ice cream truck for, like, different things. And and I was listening, and I was like, an ice cream truck? I was like, that's... And being in, and once we got into Santee, it was like, Santee's very, like, event-focused, yeah. community-focused, mm-hmm. family-focused. And I was like, that will work. Like, I think that's going to work. That's fun. And yeah. so... I remember just starting to figure out, like, oh, where did I get an ice cream truck from? I want, like, one of those old, like, authentic ones. And so I went on Craigslist and started just watching, trying to figure out, because uh, I think, is Craigslist even around today? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It is. Okay, okay. Yeah. so, so and, and there was actually a guy history, that at one point, a listing came up that he was liquidating his ice cream business, and he had, like, probably... Is that a pun? No. Liquidating <laughs> his uh, ice cream business? I mean, it was kind of it was a meltdown. Come was, on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But he... Yeah, he had, I don't know if he had like 20 or 30 of these trucks, but he had sold the majority of them. And so I went and saw there was like five left. And it still had originally the, like the original freezer units that all ran off like Freon to keep it cold. I mean, it was like, wow. And no power steering. And so I was like, $10,000. That was like the biggest investment the church made. He's like, that's going to be what we're going to use. So we bought it. And, um, and then quickly the freezer was such a pain in the butt. And so we ended up stripping up all, stripping out all the freezers, bought a Costco deep freeze, and then, Chad worked on the design to wrap it to make it look cool. And then yeah. we started pulling this around uh, in the summer to park parties. That's pretty cool. And then That's how we met the Levites. The, the, there, were, there, yeah. there were many moments, but there was one particular moment that like, I think we were, um, oh man, it was probably August of 2013. So we're planting or launching in, you know, in, um, in October 2013. And this stupid truck just stalled out and died right in the middle of Trolley Square. <laughs> Or not Trice Square, uh, veteran uh, Mission Gorge. Mission Gorge, that's right. Yeah, Mission oh. Gorge, right by the Sprouts, and Chad and I, and we're, we're in the middle of the road, and people are honking, and there's this dumb ice. It says Rise City Church. <laughs> Great advertising. You're Dang holding it. traffic up. You have to pay thousands for a billboard right oh there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So it just caused a big traffic log jam because of the dumb ice cream truck. We had a lot of maintenance issues initially with this thing. So, but also a lot of stories. Come Lots out of, of it. stories. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is. Um, Rooted, which is our discipleship experience. One of our Rooted groups is actually going to do a park party. Is what they cool. want to do with the ice cream truck. And it's so that's great. what they're going to do for I mean, the serve experience. I would encourage anybody. Like, it's actually drivable now, and and not. I mean, not in long distances, but <laughs> uh, like drivable. But like, they're in Alpine, and I was like, can it go up the mountain? Yeah, I, see. I don't know about uh, Alpine. That'd be scary. We but did it. We did it last year. Yeah. Are you? Paul Gearing did it yeah. last okay. year. Yes. So yes, I mean, indeed. whether you take it to like. Yeah, or uh, a block party. Uh, I know Matt Heinersey used to bring it at times to his kids' sports practices to yep. give ice cream away. It's just a great way to like connect with people, and we still use it for city events in Santee and here locally. And absolutely, um, yeah, it's kind of it a turned shtick. out to be awesome. But when I didn't know you guys, and you guys were like, "Yeah, we bought an ice cream truck," and <laughs> Chad and I go and give out ice cream, and I'm like, "Oh, two we were, grown men, yeah, two grown men, in an ice parks. cream truck going <laughs> to parks and giving ice cream to kids." I mean, it's interesting kids. trying to explain. Wow. When we moved awesome. here, and there's a I, the thing originally was parked in my driveway, and so people are like, "So did you move out here? Like, you're an ice cream man? Like, you mean ice cream man? <laughs> 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 to be an ice cream man?" <laughs> I'm like, do you, yeah, have, you know, do you have any like, like long, music, lost music playing from it? Yeah, like, that was a boy. So, did you go to California? That's awesome. But our yeah, our initial kind of like. I don't know, just kind of like shtick was like, hey, there, that's the church that has an ice cream truck and meets in Chick-fil-A. Just hey, kind of just fun. You, you, you got different. me. Yeah. Yes, I'm in. That's, that's awesome. So, well, so good. Well, I want to ask about this thing. Um, it's a, a Stadia framed deal that yeah. says Bolivia on it. Tell yeah. me about this. So this is when we did our first, uh, it was it, it was both. It was a church plant in Bolivia. Yeah. Um, and with the church plant, we were able to offer opportunities for people in our church to sponsor children in the community where the church is going to get planted. So That's Compassion awesome. International oh, is, um, is who we partnered yeah. with, with that. And then Stadia is a church plant organization. And I think our second Christmas offering mm-hmm. um, that we did at the church was sponsoring children, uh, Bolivian children. That's awesome. And that year, the goal was to sponsor hopefully over 100 kids, which we ended up doing. 
Um, and then the church contributed eighty nine thousand dollars on top of that for the actual church plan itself. That's awesome. Um, that and was then like three hundred people at that time. Yeah, or less. <laughs> right. just, yeah, I mean it was it was that's crazy. A enormous amount of money. And then we've and then since then we had did we did another church plant another um, in Bolivia and another one in Peru, and with the Peruvian one in a Bolivian one, like we had another time. Uh, this is probably in 2021, 22 that were more opportunities to sponsor children. And so um, there's still, I mean, we have uh, four compassion kids now. I know they're, I mean, their church has well over a hundred to 200 kids. They're getting sponsored um, awesome. in these places. And there's a church in that area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, if I could say one of the things I, re- I don't regret, I just wish could have happened. I think COVID put a pretty big halt on it is the hope would have been, especially with the first church plant, Light and Truth Church in Aurora, Bolivia, is to been able to eventually send teams to visit the kids. Cause you can still do that. Yeah. Um, but we just didn't get to the place where it could happen. And then COVID completely shut down travel gotcha. and stuff. So I don't know. There's, I mean, you know, my family someday, we would love to go visit the, the kids we sponsor there, but we'll see. That's we'll cool. see. So do they get, um, for people that aren't familiar with compassion, so they go and they get food and, and education and things like that at the church as well, or how does this work? So the churches, yeah, are really kind of set up in combination as a, as a place that people gather for worship, mm-hmm. um, but it also coincides as a school um, and at times a medical clinic. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes a central hub, and usually in those areas, the, the dad is either not present or absent from the family, so they really minister first to the moms and the kids and then the moms end up getting their kids whether it's the food or the sh- or the um, clothing and then the education or the medical stuff and then they also have the opportunity to invite them into the churches and stuff and That's and awesome. hopefully also then to reach the father yeah a whole hub for the community in the name of jesus yes yeah i love that compassion yeah. is awesome yeah so yeah great. so that was that was we did it more like i said probably in the first five six years uh with compassion um, and then got more involved afterwards based upon some personal connections and just relationship I established with Convoy of Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But, you know, we still highly believe in compassion or e- any of the child sponsorships types of situations. Yeah. Like, it's just it's so needed and so Great helpful. Work. Yeah. It's awesome. We're down to one. We're down to one. Um, the last item, one item here. Yes. Relic? <laughs> oh, relic. That got weird. Okay. <laughs> All right. Placard, Santee School District to Rise City Church and its congregation for their generous donations to Santee Schools, March 2022. Yeah. That was given to us from the Santee School District. Um, multiple dif- multiple times in multiple schools throughout the history of the Christmas offering, we've given money to help different, whether it be school teachers, we've given gift cards for them to have supplies at their schools. Um we gave, uh, it wasn't a school, I guess, like fifty or $60,000 to help build a library here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one in particular was one of the years that we, we had a large overage, and we ended up giving gift cards to every teacher. And I wrote a letter oh, to every teacher in that. the yeah. Santee School District and talked about like, what they're doing. Whether they recognize it or not, they're aligning with the heart of Jesus, who said, welcome the children. And so I, I don't recall the exact amount. I mean, it was at least 35 oh. to... Oh, yes. We do. Because it was $75. Yeah. And then a $5 Starbucks card. But the only reason we remember is That's because right. we tried so hard to get oh, these gift cards yeah. and we kept getting flagged for money laundering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, no, no, we're not laundering money. We're giving it away. And they're like, oh, ha, ha. yeah, right. And so it took us a long time. To figure out all the logistics, a on few it. things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's been the Santee schools, Literacy First as a charter school. We've worked with some Lakeside schools. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah. I just I just think that especially even being next gen focused at Rice City, it's like it's not just in the church, but it's also yeah. These teachers are on the front lines, mm-hmm. and I think more than anything is trying to come beside the teachers and empower and encourage them more, encourage them. Um, and the Christmas offering has been a way for us to be able to to do that. Awesome. Yeah, they need um, encouragement. Yeah, and there's not a lot we can do to be like, I mean, help. It's they've got lots of training. They're so competent, but they need the encouragement and the the gas in the tank because they have a huge job to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not enough resources. Yeah, and, one, and I would say one of the things it's, I don't know if it's unique or not unique, but it's like questions we've been asked at times is like, why do we give all this money to 
public government funded types of mm. institutions. Like they're getting money anyway. And it's like, it's not for the actual, I mean, some of it's for the school. We help do a STEM lab. I mean, we, at yeah. one of the schools, some of it's I mean, like that, providing paper. But it's just like seeing that, like, you know, when we talk about being representative of Jesus Christ, and you might be the only Jesus that someone actually encounters or sees, like, that's right. it's like that gift card and that letter. That's they're not going to come to Rice City Church. They're not. They're not stepping to, into our church. But this is a way for us to like meet them where they're at. Say you're seen, known, and valued, and this matters. And it, it's not. It's not a bait and switch. Like okay, now we've done that. Now you need to come to church. It's like it's a deposit that's made. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the things that's been. Um, I, I just I think that like one of the things that's most been overwhelming, um, over the last few days is just like, and I've said this in different ways, but I just keep being reminded like yesterday and I, I, I got called by, um, she's a Jewish lady. Um, that is one of the school board members. Mm. She has nothing to do with Rice city, but she remembers this. And I remember her. Yeah. And it's like, um, I've had very few people and I don't, I'm not saying this bad. Like no one's like, Oh man, I remember that when pigs fly Easter, (laughs) that was a good one. (laughs) (laughs) No one talks about that. No one's like, oh, yeah, that Chatterbox series or even the baton. I mean, whatever. Your teaching is important, but your living is most valuable. Hmm. And um, it's the people that keep, they're like, hey, man, I I just remember my kid was having PTSD and you pulled me aside and you prayed with me. Hmm. Um, I remember when I saw that there were too many chairs at the school and, and you saw that we left and you chased us out to the parking lot and said, I'll get, I'll get chairs for you. You know, and it's like, and the school teachers, like we had nothing to do with Rice City Church, but you gave every one of our teachers a blessing. Not me, our church did, but like, it just goes to remind me, like it is those steady, faithful, continual deposits in people's life mm-hmm. that really have the potential to like change lives. Um, and we can get too, it goes with our values. We can get too caught up on these one time incredible instantaneous moments and God can work in that. But I think the greatest gift that I've gotten 10 years now looking back is like, that's not what people are talking about. Hmm. It's incremental over instant. And, um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. We, um, we got a few minutes left. Uh, we do this really deep theological thing at my house called sparkle and farkle. Um, (laughs) Highs and lows. What what Roast are some right. of the best? And maybe maybe you could start with a few of the more difficult. They don't have to be terrible things, but yeah. in ten years. What what was kind of a challenge in ten years? But what are you going to really take away and say? You know, a couple of the best things about the past ten years here. I mean, the hardest things. Um, the hardest things seem to all gravitate towards that whole COVID. <laughs> I don't remember that. Was that? Yeah. And that and the, and, the, and the reason that was hard, it wasn't because of the virus, and it wasn't because of the the race tensions. I mean, those were the precipitous of them. But like, what was hard was the relational fallouts of them. Mm. Like, they fractured relationships, they created division, they created suspicion of like, were we really in this together or not? Um, did you really have my back? Or people may ask, do you really have my back or not? Like, like for me, I. I just think anytime there's been relational friction and tension, that's 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 the people joked around yesterday. Like, dude, you looked way younger uh, in that video. <laughs> you did. Like my gray hairs, but you were younger at the I same know. time. I know. I mean, a decade is a decade, <laughs> but, but only like ten years. But my my gray hairs don't come because I preached a bad sermon or because an event didn't go off. It's because what if that relationship could have been salvaged? Or what if, like, I could have said that differently? What if I could have spent a little bit more time, like, thinking of where they were coming from? Like, those are the things that are most difficult. Yeah. Um, because it's people over anything, you know? So, um, and so that's the hardest thing also, of just even saying goodbye. Yeah. Is like, I just... I, my favorite things of Rice City Church aren't things. There's people. Yeah. It's this. It's just this incredible 
culture of people together believing that God can do something special and has and continues to. And, um, yeah, like I really, I, I, I was in a humble way, very proud yesterday because God really has been in our midst. And, um, I really hope that continues to be the case, not here, but like wherever I go, because like, I, I always want to be like, I'll always, I'll always compare everything to this. Um, and I don't know if that's fair for whatever's next. Because <laughs> um, sometimes God just says, this is what I'm going to do right here, right now. So, um, and I love you guys. I love you too. Yeah. I just, we have a fantastic staff. Yeah. We have a fantastic congregation. And so, and that's sparkle, farkle, or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't sparkle, know. farkle. <laughs> I don't yeah, that's, that's a hard part is just... Accepting that there's something wonderful on the way for you and for Rice. And at the same time, being able to grieve the way it is right now is its own thing. And it's not going to be like this again. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that there's nothing great coming. It just means, you know, we just have to accept that this chapter is flipping over. And I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But... I think every every shakeup like this reminds us that our only constant is our attachment to God. Mm. And all of these good and wonderful things we experience here are icing on the cake, but they're not the cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so you it's it's interesting when you experience it as your church because you connect it with your relationship with God. But even the church yeah. Yeah. is not the cake. God is the cake. That's right. You know, but as you as people in your life that you love pass away. And jobs and careers you had for 20 years disappear. Mm-hmm. It's just always that reminder that yeah. Jesus is everything, as Pete's sermon was a, mm-hmm. a few weeks back. Yeah. I think change, you know, change is one of those things that no one likes it, but it's absolutely necessary. And and what I mean by that is like even if I weren't leaving, it's important for us to keep pushing towards change because change puts us in a position of discomfort. Yes. More um, awareness, but it also like, it creates appreciation and gratitude for what is and what might not be. And I think that like, you know, a gift that's coming out of even this season of, of shifting and changing for me is like, I'm you know, just like anybody else. Like you can get in the rigmarole and just doing things and I got the sermon to preach. I got this with the staff meeting, I got this, 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 this. And all of a sudden like days are long, years are short. And you're like, and, but you don't have the appreciation because you're just doing. And then all of a sudden when those changes start to take place, it's like this appreciation quotient kicks in and you're just like, whoa. You know? and, and I think that that is the fight of our life. Mm. The fight of our life is to fight to be grateful and not to become um, disengaged or uh, undervalue just this present moment um, because you won't always have it. And um, yeah, that's good. And so I'm just uh, I'm kind of in that nostalgic moment right now, and I'm just like, yeah, there were definitely times along the way that's just like, it's another day, it's another day, another message, another this, another that, and mm-hmm. and I and I and I I wish you know, and I think this is probably a lot of people's stories. You just wish like, gosh, just how grateful I could have been this or this or this. Even even San Diego, as much as everyone, it's so funny. People are like. Like, you know, there's still some of those people like, ah, man, good thing for you getting out of here. And I'm like, I don't want to get out of here. Like, like, I mean, there's moments that I felt like, let me get out of here. But you even start to think about all the things of this city that um, make it what it is. Like, like the the melting pot of people Mm -hmm. and the slice of heaven. Mm. Like, I'm going to have to fight for my kids to be able to figure out how they're going to continue to experience kind of the array of background and diversity and all those things not speaking against blooming to normal i'm so grateful to be going there but it's just it's more of a homogenous community Mm -hmm. um so even and and part of the diversity in san diego is what makes it so stinking difficult (laughs) to like exist because you're trying to think about everybody Mm -hmm. um but behind every like difficulty probably is some type of blessing that is getting overlooked Absolutely. And that's the thing that we got to fight to always see is the blessing on the backside. So I thought you were going to say, I'm not saying that. And then I thought you were going to say, we don't annoy each other sometimes. 
as a staff. <laughs> but I love them anyway. To me, that's all the fun is like, yeah. That we annoy oh, yeah. each other sometimes. Yeah, and then we we work together as a team. That's and... her farkle, I guess. <laughs> Man, I'll I mean, just, we can, I'll we can definitely say that. We I'll can miss definitely. It all. I mean, <laughs> I know we, we annoy the crap out of each other. <laughs> sometimes we do. Yeah, yes. like, but, but it's way better to have that annoyance and to fight through it for the love that we share. Yeah. Because it's worth it. Yeah. So, well, Brandon, your leadership makes a difference everywhere. It's been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve with you and learn from you and just grow to love Jesus more because of you. Thank you. I've grown so much as a pastor in the last seven years. I look back on the first few years and I'm like, I am so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Just of all the own things in my life I had to work through. Um, I just never had a boss uh, as good as you. And I just did not know what to do with it and mm. how to process um, it all out and all through. And you gave me so much grace going back where I'd be like, I don't know if I would have given her that much grace. <laughs> um, and I am mm. grateful for that, for what you showed me and the friendship of your family and the honor of getting to walk with your kids that you allowed that. It was, it was a gift that we're sad. I know it's not saying goodbye to you, but the constant presence. You guys have been amazing. So thank mm. you. Yeah. Now it's Pete's turn to cry. <laughs> I didn't mean to <laughs> <laughs> start crying. Yeah, yeah. I know. No, no yeah, I, that's man. We still got tomorrow too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'll close this up. It's okay. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. maybe Brett, Robert, you did mention. I just want to make sure people feel communicated too. You mentioned yesterday that we do still have an opportunity to say yeah. goodbye to Brandon. You want to give more clarity on that? Yeah. So this. Um, this last Sunday was Brandon's final Sunday as our, as preaching as our lead pastor. Um, but this is not goodbye yet. Um, he's still going to be in San Diego, still going to be attending and part of Rice City Church, um, through May, if I understand correctly. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably move around the 26th or 27th, 28th ish of May. May. So there's still, there's still some time. Um, and then on May 19th, we're actually going to have a going away party open house type of thing in the evening, so sunday yeah in in the afternoon and evening so um so make sure that you kind of stay tuned in for more details about that and just make sure to mark your calendar so that you can be a part of that um, but that will be our time to formally really say, say goodbye, goodbye. Yeah. for now for now and yeah i wasn't joking yesterday when i said i hope that they invite me back in the winter months to preach every once in a while so i'm with you <laughs> So yes. we'll invite you but, back on election week. That's your specialty. Yeah. Oh, why? November seventh. <laughs> yes. Come on now. Oh, why? So I can invite every every four years. I wonder why they're inviting me every four years. Oh, That's what terrible. do you know? And none of us want to do it. It's Brandon's it's, specialty. It's twenty forty, and Donald Trump and Joe Biden are still the candidates. Oh, no. <laughs> the That's head head <laughs> leading so. our country. Yeah. So, so good. That's a great um, note to end on. By y'all. that time, Brandon will be running for president. It'll be good. I will never. I already look old enough. So. Um, <laughs> I will, I'll close it out just saying the mm-hmm. people that listen to this, you know, this even for digging deeper, you know, like it's weird. It's, we have an audience that comes and watches this or listens to this yeah. and doesn't necessarily even like we talk about the message, but they never listen to the message. They just hear about us talking about the message, you know. <laughs> um, but I, we, you know, whether it's digging deeper or Sunday mornings or whatever ways that people connect, like, man, like I just want to say thank you. And um, I, I just want to also just speak the world of these three. Um, I think that the greatest comfort I have in kind of saying goodbye or whatever that means is simply just knowing that there are incredible people like Robert and Pete and Mariah and our whole staff and elders that like God is in them, working through them. And um, uh, it's not a cliche statement. The best is yet to come. And so keep tuning in, keep um, serving, uh, keep being generous and just, man, it, it's, it's been an incredible privilege. And the nice thing about the digital medium is like, you know, we can connect online too, even if we're not here in person. So, but very grateful and love you guys. Thank you. So, tune off with that. All right. Thanks, See, See you next time. time.